Welcome to Toyota Time with Tim the Tool Man. As you can see, there's no Sean here, but there is returning guest Mark, who hails from Napa. And if you know our channel, we actually recently did a sunroof drain cleaning video. And what we discovered during that video is that his drains were pretty clear, but he still had some sort of leak happening. We pulled the headliner down a little bit to see if maybe the drain tube going to the passenger rear was leaking and it wasn't. The water was draining through the sunroof tray somewhere before the drain. So we're thinking there's some type of screw hole or something. So what we're gonna do today for you is we're gonna show you how to drop the headliner and then we're gonna pour water into the tray and investigate where that leak is actually happening and fix it with most likely with some silicone. We are gonna use the factory service manual as a reference and let me show you some of the pages we're gonna use. So we're in my 2000 Toyota factory service manual, we're in the body section. It starts on B077 and it gives you a schematic of the whole breakdown of all the parts that are associated with getting the headliner down. So it shows a nice schematic. You turn the page and it starts the removal process of how you remove it. And there's a lot of steps. And we don't know for sure if we're gonna need all these steps because we've read on Toyota forms that people were able to get the headliner down pretty quick. And so we're assuming that they didn't have to remove all the body panels that the factory service manual recommends but we're gonna see firsthand if it is necessary. It goes from B077 all the way to B080. Those are all the pages out of the factory service manual we're gonna reference. So now we're gonna go to the inside of the vehicle and we'll show you what we're gonna start taking apart. So I'm sitting in the driver's seat and I'm gonna show you some of the things we're gonna be removing. Right here, we got the grab rail that you would grab onto uh, when you're getting into the driver's seat. You've got your sun visor. These ones on the A-pillar on the driver and passenger side, these might be the most problematic to remove the Phillips head screws because Toyota decided to use a Loctite on the screws and they're super hard to remove. We're most likely gonna be using a impact driver, screwdriver to break these free and hopefully we're not gonna shear off the screws and be forced to drill them out. We have sunglass holder, the lights, and the sunroof switch that we're gonna have to take off. You have the passenger side sun visor. Then again, you have that other A-pillar grab handle that's probably gonna be hard to remove. You have the passenger side grab handle that's uh, at the person's head. We're gonna probably try to just pull this B-pillar uh, trim out enough to where we can get the headliner out underneath it without having to hopefully remove the seatbelt connection here. You have the dome light that's on right now, you see. We're gonna have to remove that cover and switch. And then let's go to the back. I'll show you the other things on the back side that we're gonna have to remove. So we have the grab rail for the passenger side rear seat. We're most likely gonna pull this big trim thing. So this is the cargo area. We're gonna probably remove this whole trim thing so we can pull this out and get the headliner free of this whole big trim piece. We have the light and the trim here, so we're gonna remove this to get the headliner out. We have the opposing piece, driver's side rear. We're gonna remove this whole panel. This is that grab rail for the driver's side passenger in the rear. So we're gonna remove all these pieces in order to get the headliner free. So Mark and I are deciding to get the hard ones out of the way first. Mark is in the passenger front seat and he's gonna go for the A-pillar grab handle. And like I said, these are the ones that have the factory Loctite that are pretty hard to remove. So we're gonna attempt to break these free with the impact screwdriver. Gotta take off a couple little plastic clips first that hide the screws and you just pop them out with a little screwdriver. He's grabbing his own little impact set. If you don't know what an impact driver does, when you hit it with a hammer, it will turn one way or the other how you sit up. It can turn right or left for tightening and loosening. As you hit it with a hammer, it turns the head of the tool a little bit to the right or the left based on how you set it up. What Mark's gonna do with this thing, he's striking it with a hammer here and when the force drives it into the screw, it's gonna turn a little bit every time he strikes it. And that's how an impact screwdriver works. You hit it, 
and it turns it a little bit. Now, a trick that might work for us is it's kind of counterintuitive, but sometimes it's good to actually try to tighten it, hit it to where it's tightening to a little bit to the right and then try to break it free. Because when you try to tighten it, it will maybe break free the Loctite and then we'll be more successful when we hit it to loosen it. Okay, so Mark's got the Phillips head screw on there and he's gonna try to tighten it first with the impact screwdriver. And now he's changing it to the loosening to the left. It moved, but it's still tight on there. Cheese and rice, it's tight. Hey, I think it's moving, dude. It's moving for sure, but it's... It's working. Oh, he's getting it. The impact driver did it. Definitely try giving it a strike where it's tightening the screw a little bit and then go for the loosening. So this worked really well. Oh yeah, you see all that Loctite on there? Yeah, you could see they used a blue Loctite and it's not like typical blue Loctite 242 that's easy to remove. This must be a Toyota type of Loctite that's super hard to get off, to break free because people are well known to stripping these out if they don't use an impact driver. If you want to get these grab handles off the A-pillar, definitely use an impact driver. So here's my impact screwdriver set. I just bought this on Amazon. It's made by Capri. So that's the name of it. Nice little case. Pretty heavy duty tool, multiple bits. It actually has some even bigger long bits. Mark's willing to give this one a try too for my own interest to see if this one works just as well as a snap-on. So he's gonna utilize the Capri one now. So Mark's gonna demonstrate how you actually set up the tool to either go tightening or loosening. You just push in and if you turn it to the left, that means it's gonna loosen. If you push in and turn it to the right, that's gonna be tightening. We're gonna start off with tightening and I'm not hitting it, you know, super hard either. I'm only giving it, you know, a good, a good tap. Yeah, it's working. It's working. Yeah, it's coming. It was just a little more stubborn than the other ones. Now this is interesting. The steering wheel gets in the way. It's gonna be striking between the steering wheel. This is gonna be kind of uh, tricky. I see it turning. Finally loose, okay. We're gonna be able to get both these A-pillar grab rails off without breaking or stripping anything, which is pretty good. We actually did really good with this. Okay, both grab rails are now out of the A-pillar. Now Mark's working on the driver's side grab handle that's up near the headliner and these don't have any factory Loctite. So these should be able to come off just with a standard Phillips head screwdriver. No big deal, simple. I actually put this one in so I know it should be easy. Most of our trucks don't come with, with this side. That's right, this is a grab rail mod. I put one in on mine too because Sean told me about the, the grab rail mod. <laughs> yeah, Sean gave me one that's the appropriate color also, so we'll put, be putting that one back in. Okay. So now he's just going to remove the Phillips head screws that hold the sun visor on the driver's side. Hold this for you. Okay, sun visor is out of the way. Okay, we'll go for the dome light and the controls for the sunroof. So there's little notches where you can get like a little screwdriver, a little slim tool that you can pull this lens out. So that's what Mark's gonna do. He's gonna get a small screwdriver in here and pry this off. It's got one side and the other side. There it is. 
There it is. You can see, you know, the light bulbs and the switches and stuff. So there's this big Phillips head. Looks like that's the one we're gonna have to remove to get this down. Looks like it's coming down just with that, huh? Looks Pull towards the back of the truck and it comes out. Okay. These hooks right here and the other one on the other side, they fit right here and right here. Like you said, you pull backwards to free it. Now we're gonna have to disconnect this electrical connector right here. Okay, now that whole assembly's free. He's gonna get the rear view mirror out. It looks like it's three Phillips head screws. One, two, three. Helps to have an extra set of hands when doing this. Yes, it does. Okay, so now we're on the passenger side. Mark's in the front seat, and he's gonna just attack removing the grab rail for the passenger near the headliner. This one's never been out, and that was pretty simple, so. Yeah, they're obviously not using any Loctite on these. Okay. That grab rail's out. Now he's gonna go for the sun visor on the passenger side. Okay. See, there's a plug that you have to disconnect there. That was super simple. That was super simple. So just squeeze the connector and get that out. Mm -hmm. so now we're on the passenger side in the rear. Same thing on the driver and passenger side. You have a grab rail on the headliner and just Remove the Phillips head screws and you'll be able to get them off. One thing to note when doing this is you are removing a quite a number of different screws. They are a little bit different. The grab rail ones seem to be all the same, but the, all the different screws for the, the sun visors and for the sunroof controls and lights, they're different screws. So keep track of what screws are taken off which so you get them back in the right spot. So Mark is now going for the little slots that hold the cargo cover. They're just, again, a couple Phillips head screws that he's removing. Oh yeah. And then we're going for the one on the opposite side. This is gonna help us get this panel off. We have to remove pieces that hold the cargo cover on and get those out of the way so we can remove this panel out. Now we're going for this rear lens that lights up the cargo area. He just popped it off the lens right here. There's a little indentation where you could get a screwdriver and pop it off. Now it looks like he's got four Phillips head screws that he has to remove to get this off. There's going to be some type of electrical connection here, obviously. We have to unplug. Looks like it's right here. He's going to squeeze that and pull that sucker out. Okay, now that light's disconnected. This is the rear area where when you pull the cargo cover, it, it slips in here and hooks. So this is just a single Phillips head screw on either side. That just comes out real easy. And he's gonna go for the opposite side here. And that one's out of the way. So this is a nice little set of tools. It's a trim removal set that I bought off an of Amazon seller. And it's got all these different shapes and sizes and widths of plastic tools to get behind and like pull plastic trim pieces away. Because all these trim pieces here, they're all kind of hooked in with like little plastic plugs. You want to get behind the plastic piece so you can pull it off. These trim tools will help you get in between. So we're going to go for this rear trim piece that the dome light for the rear cargo area. So we're going to slide a tool in here to grab a purchase point and start pulling to break free the clips. Mark's going to pick a tool of choice. He's going to get in between and just start prying a little pulling down. There, you've heard a pop right there. That was one given way. And you, and you can tell where they're at because kind of flimsy where there's not one. Yeah. There we go, that gave way. There we go. Yeah. 
Once you get enough of a gap, you can get your fingers in there, then you can pull away. You can see the clips, they just pop into a female receptor. So these are the male little clips. So what he's doing with the tool and with his hands is just breaking these clips free so where you can pull the piece of trim down. So that's basically how a lot of these trim pieces are. They're just plugged in with these clips. Right here, this looks like it's obviously for the uh, windshield washer for the rear and that's the plug for the dome light and this is some electrical that probably runs to the the door mechanism for the windows and stuff there's a small phillips head screw that we can remove here so we can get this back panel free on both sides right here so one on each side he's got that one free and he's got that one free Okay, we're gonna go for the removal of the center dome light. He's getting a little screwdriver in, kind of where the switch is and seeing how he can pull that sucker off. All the other ones have a little pry hole, this one doesn't. So you just have to use a small enough screwdriver you can get in between the lens and this plastic trim piece. And now you can see that there's one Phillips head screw here and one here that you can remove and again there's going to be electrical connection we're going to have to disconnect once we get it down okay now he's going to pull it down and disconnect the electrical connection and it looks like it's just like the front one you squeeze this in and pull back just like so okay now the center dome light is out of the way so right now, Mark is pulling away the passenger side rear cargo trim piece, and you can see the area that he's already cleared. So we're pretty confident that we're not gonna have to remove the whole side panel. We could just pry it away enough to where we can get the headliner slipped out of there. So we're probably okay, we'll see. We're realizing that this is a big kind of awkward piece, so we are gonna remove this rear panel. So he's just pulling the, the clips free. So Mark's removing this rear scuff piece right here. I think that's what the factory service manual calls it. It actually fits over the side panel, so we have to remove it first. So this is basically right in front of your uh, rear bumper. Making me feel like I should have got a manicure before I did this. And now, now this <laughs> is the same thing. You have to pry it up. You could use a little tool to get a purchase point. Now here's something to note. Everywhere where you see a screw hole, that's where one of the clips is. There's no benefit to prying in between. Make your prying attempts right where the screw holes are because that's where the clips are. So he's gonna go for the next hole. Pry that up. Pry that up. And the last one. And now that sucker will just come out. There we go. Now that's out of our way. Now you can see the reason why we wanted to remove that piece is because it sits over the top of the side panels. So we needed to remove this first so we can get both side panels out. So it might help to get the carpet out of the way a little bit. And it's gonna drag on the wheel wells. Mark's getting in there. You might have to pull uh, from the other side too now, huh? Yeah, this piece has gotta come off. Yeah. Okay, so this piece right here, covers the side panel of the cargo area. We got one step ahead of ourselves. So we have to remove this piece. To remove that piece, we have these other scuff things they call it. So it's another two Phillips head screws because this piece goes over this other side panel that we have to remove. We're gonna take this one off and then we'll be able to pull this one out of the way. Those plastic clips that the screws go into will strip out really easy, so they don't have to be very tight. Be gentle with them. Okay, so now Mark is gonna be able to pry this piece out now that he's got that other bottom piece near the passenger door out. That just came off. It popped off. There we go, so now that piece is out of the way. Now this whole piece should be able to slide out no problem. So you can see it's falling out. Well, that's why it tells you to remove the seat belt so you can get it out of out of here. You yeah, you can remove the seat belt, but it looks like we could just leave it as is. The seat belt just kind of holding it up, so yep. that works. So we're gonna do the same with the other side. We're not gonna bother showing it because you just saw it on the driver's side. 
Okay, I lied. We actually are gonna show something on the passenger side. His is a 2000. Uh, the other years are gonna be different, but the newer models have a bigger little side cargo area. You could hold things like jumper cables, little tools, whatever you want. It's kind of cool. You could pull this little panel out, you can pry it out. And see this tube in here? That's the rear drain tube for the rear passenger side drain for the sunroof. That's what you're looking at. That's the, the drain that goes down right near the rear bumper. It's kind of cool that you can actually access it and see if water's draining out. Another thing that you have to worry about on the passenger side rear is you have this auxiliary power so you can plug things in to charge them. That's obviously gonna have an electrical connection. So when we pull this away, you might have to unplug a connector on the back side of this so it's not putting strain on the wire. So Mark's just pulling this all away right now. Just getting his arm in there and prying all the clips. Now he's gonna work from the back side. There's a connection. He pulled it away and you know, Toyota, they do things right. You know, they give you a little uh, wiggle room so the wire's long enough to where you can pull this panel away and then disconnect the electrical connection so you're not putting any strain on the wire. And there's no like push button. Or there's anything. no push button. It's just oh, a comes. plug that you just have to pull back. Mm -hmm. Now we're just leaning these in. So we're kind of making a cargo panel teepee, you know. It's kind of cool now. You can get a nice vantage point of some things. This is the drain tube that goes down for the uh, sunroof rear drain on the passenger side. This orange color tubing is the tubing for your rear windshield wiper washer fluid. So you get a bird's eye view of that. The driver's side, same thing. You can see the drain tube for the driver's side rear drain is coming through here and it's going right over the wheel well. You're just getting a nice view of everything that you don't normally get to see on your vehicle because all the trim pieces are in the way. I think, Mark, do you agree? Are we ready to pull the headliner down? Yeah, it's just these uh, one, two, three, and four clips. There's these clips starting from the rear. One here, one here. And then you go forward, there's one here, another one there, and then there's two more further up, boom, and over there, boom, you see it. So there's six clips in the rear. So same thing, we're gonna just start prying and breaking these things free. Mark's gonna use one of the trim piece tools and pop the clip free. Oh, that sucker's in there, huh? It's just really long. Okay. That broke. It broke. The first one broke, unfortunately, so they're kind of in there. He's gonna have to see if he can get replacements for these. Ooh, where did that one go? Yep, that, bro that one broke too. We gotta, there's, there's gotta be a different way to get these out. This one right here and this one right here, those are easy to get to and Marco was just able to pry from here. But now when you go deeper in, trying to get your arm in there with the tool, so now we're gonna attack these from the actual bottom, try to get underneath the clip with a skinny plastic tool from that trim removal kit and then try to pop them free. And we're kind of expecting that these are all gonna break and they're gonna have to be replaced because they're just a lot of force to unclip them and they're breaking instead of removing. Trying to just get in between the headliner and the clip and prying down. I can tell. Okay, so we are one for three. The, <laughs> this one didn't break, which is awesome. Okay, now he's going for the other one, sliding in between the clip and the headliner and prying. Oh, it went flying. Is that one intact? Hey, we're two for four now. Okay, now he's going to go for the frontmost of the six clips. He's just getting in from the passenger side rear. Whoa, there it goes. Is that intact? It's intact. All right, we're three for five. Okay. Now you can see this sucker has got a lot of a flop to it. So now I'm gonna hold the headliner up so it doesn't go anywhere on us when he gets the six to six clips out. Okay. It's intact. It's intact, all right. This thing is just flopping down. 
You see, we have to remove those other trim pieces, huh? Yeah, we can pull them down. He's gonna put the two broken clips back in. It's kind of holding in place because now we gotta get some of the front headliner trim pieces out of the way so we can drop it down the rest of the way. He's pulling down the top trim on the driver's side seat. That's loose enough to get us. Yeah, that's probably loose enough to, to get us enough room. Now he's pulling down the trim right near the driver's head right here to get a little room. He's working on the right near the A pillar. And that looks like it's probably enough room to work with too. We don't have to remove it all the way. Maybe one more clip. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's plenty of room for us. That's plenty of room to work. Yeah. Then we'll do the same with the other side. So now he's removing the trim piece for the passenger side rear seat. Now he's working on the B pillar trim. Now he's on the passenger side front trim and then going to the A pillar, pulling that all down. That's it. Okay, it looks like we could start getting this out. The other little side of the sun visor is where it clips in to hold it in place. It has a couple Phillips head screws, so we have to remove those too. You want to get a tool? There it is. Oh, there it is. You have to free the plug. So he pulled it down from the front back. Like he dipped it down and pulled it out. Okay, and he's just prying down from the back to get that clip out. He's going to get a trim removal tool to get a little prying action going. And he pried it out. So see this little trim piece around the sunroof? So it actually captures the headliner. So it just pries off with your hand. So Mark's just gonna pry this away and it just goes around the whole framing of the sunroof and just pull it away. Actually has this little piece here that tells you this is the rear. Where this seam is, that's the rear part of it. So that's gonna go towards the rear that where that seam is. He's just pulling that all the way using his finger and that's out of the way. Oh, I can see now that was holding it quite a bit. Now the headliner looks like it's pretty loose. Can we break it free and slide it out the back? Okay, so here's the plan. I'm actually sitting in the driver's seat. This is right near the headliner. Since we didn't remove the B-pillar trim and the seat belt out of our way, what Mark's gonna do is he's gonna be pulling this trim out of the way while I pull the headliner back out towards the rear cargo area. You can see the headliner is really loose now, ready to come out. Mark's going to be working in the front, pulling away those trim pieces while I'm starting to work it out this way. It's coming, it's coming. This is definitely a two-person or maybe a three-person operation. Dirty. It smells glorious, by the way, with all the water that's been getting in it. Okay, here's the whole headliner. That was not so bad. So now let's go into the inside of the vehicle and show you what everything looks like with the headliner removed. So I'll start from the rear. You can see it's like, guess all this sound deadening material is, guess what I would call it. And then we come in from one of the passenger doors and we could see the sunroof. So this is the, the sunroof area. Our next step is to kind of do the same thing we did in the sunroof drain video. We're gonna concentrate some water into the trays and where Mark was getting the water coming down, he was getting water coming down the pillar area right where he's at right now. So we just temporarily connected up the uh, controls for the, the sunroof and Mark's gonna turn the key ignition on and so we could roll the sunroof back and then concentrate some water into the tray and see if we could see somewhere in this framework where the water's leaking through. So here's the rear drain tube on the passenger side. The water would be coming through from the sunroof and traveling through this tray. On the top, we're gonna concentrate some water in this area of the tray and then see if water is leaking out before it gets to the drain, because that's what we saw before. We saw water actually leaking down the C pillar. It was leaking down 
right in the area where the rear drain is and it was leaking out before the drain so somewhere it's it's leaking water through like a screw hole or something so we're gonna pour water through the top and then look film from below and see if there's any water leaking out before it reaches the drain connection so Mark's gonna be concentrating water in this outer part of the tray so this is the guide where the actual sunroof slides through he's gonna be concentrating it right in this outer section that leads to the rear drain and then I'm gonna get inside the vehicle and start filming and see if I can locate where the water's leaking out before it reaches the drain. So after pouring a bunch of water through from the top and I'm here down below, we did not see any leak to speak of. The water was draining like it should out the rear drain. We thought maybe we were gonna be able to show you maybe another common leak point on these sunroofs, but obviously we didn't find the leak. So whatever was leaking before is not leaking anymore and we're kind of stumped because maybe some elves or some gnomes came in the middle of the night and fixed it for Mark. He actually reported recently that it's been raining where he lives in Napa. California has been getting some rain and he has not been experiencing the leak he had before. So the water before was leaking down the C-pillar and getting the carpet wet on the passenger side wheel well. And he hasn't been noticing any leak there or any wetness in this area like it was before. But last time when we pulled the headliner out of the way in this area of the passenger rear door, we were seeing water dripping down and getting it wet in this area. So how it resolved itself, we don't know. But if you remember from the first video that we did uh, with Mark on the sunroof drain cleaning, there was a seam on the front of the trim that goes around the glass of the sunroof and that was obviously leaking and it is a reported and common leak point for the sunroofs on these forerunners and probably Tacomas. We're gonna get some silicone in that seam and fill it up and hopefully stop water from leaking out in the future. The sunroof was open right now and this is the seam we're talking about and it's kind of weird because on my 2000 forerunner I have a sunroof too but I don't have a pronounced seam like a mark. So maybe some of them are better than others, but my seam is really tight. You can't see a gap like you see on marks. And this is where water is obviously getting through on his truck, because we determined that last time. So we're gonna get some silicone on the top and then maybe peel this thing back a little bit and really stick it in there too. So see this rubber piece right here? So if we get a tool here, and pull it back a little bit. We can maybe put a little bit more silicone in there too to help seal it a little bit and then just put this back in place. Get it in there as best you can from the top to really seal it really good and then we'll retest it afterwards and make sure it's not leaking. We're gonna first clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna use this clean streak stuff again because I like using it. It dries clean, it's kind of like brake cleaner. We're just gonna spray a little bit in here just to get to where the silicone will hear better. Spray a little bit. So you can see the rag is kind of dirty there. Let me spray a little more. You just want as clean of a surface as possible for the uh, silicone RTV to adhere to the plastic. Maybe one more shot. Okay, that looks nice and clean. You can see that you have the top seam and then right in here, there's the seam that kind of travels down the front. So we're gonna fill from the front all the way up the whole thing. So by pulling back the rubber, we can get the silicone in there and travel it all the way up that seam. So this is a can of Permatex adhesive sealant clear RTV silicone. And it's kind of a ginormous can. So you, you could do a lot of applications. We're gonna maybe need one one hundredth of what this can can do. So we just need a little bit. I'm gonna pull this rubber uh, weather seal and then Mark's gonna try to get it in there. if we push this thing back, it's just gonna seal itself. So mm -hmm. I think I will squeeze and, and seal it up, right? And then we'll just wipe off the excess here, huh? Kind of push it in there with my finger. Yeah, he's kind of pushing it in there with his finger. When I 
was like here midway I saw it coming out back here already so I know it was flowing in there he put a pretty good bead on that front part and then I'm just pushing it in there it's most likely good to go worst case scenario it leaks again and what do we do we're just gonna go back and put another bead in there. So Mark's just taking a rag now, just wiping off the excess on either side of the crack there. And luckily this is an area of the vehicle where if you do a little bit of a sloppy job, is anybody gonna notice it? No, maybe a bird that's getting ready to shit on the top of your car. <laughs> but I think he did a nice job wiping it off. We're gonna close this now and the pressure of it being closed is gonna push against this rubber weather stripping and it's gonna just help the silicone cure on the front part of that crack. And that's it. We're done with our investigating the leak. We thought for sure that getting the headliner down and concentrating water on that passenger side tray, we were gonna see a leak that he had before when we had Mark over for the drain cleaning, but we didn't see a leak. Mark poured about three quarts of water into that tray and it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It drained out the rear drain and there was no other leak. So how that water was coming through before, we have no clue. We can't investigate any further because we already poured enough water in there to replicate the leak and there was no leak. At least the video has value and the value of the video is that for whatever reason you wanna take your headliner down. Maybe your headliner is really trashed. You bought a used vehicle, the previous owner trashed it and you took one out of a wreck truck, maybe at a pick and pull, and now you wanna know how to remove it and replace it. The other thing we showed you is that there is that common leak point of that front crack on the trim that goes around the glass of the sunroof. And that's been a reported problem of a leak spot. So it's a pretty simple fix. Just grab some silicone RTV, you pull back that little rubber weather stripping, you concentrate a little bit on the front, run a bead on the top, smooth it out, get the excess off, let it dry for 24 hours or more, and then recheck it by pouring, concentrating a bunch of water like to mimic a heavy downpour, and see if it's still leaking. If it's still leaking, then apply a little bit more RTV and then recheck it. But we're pretty confident that we got enough in there to where now when Mark checks it out, it's gonna be leak free. So what Mark is gonna do for us in a day or two, he's gonna try that. He's gonna pour water on the top and he's gonna report back to me whether the fix worked and then I'll put that in the video description of whether it was successful or not. Now, we could show you the whole putting back of everything, putting the headliner back, putting all the trim pieces back, but we're trying to keep the video length a little bit shorter. If you can get that headliner off and, and get it all the way out, you're gonna be able to get everything back in. You just reverse your procedure. Take notes of the, the order of the way you took things apart, and then you just get everything back fastened up, and you're good to go. We thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and special guest Mark. We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care. Bye-bye.